Today we're going to learn about artist Andrea Nelson. She is a self-taught watercolor artist and she loves animals and nature. She lives in Atlanta, Georgia with her husband and two sons. They also have a rescue dog named Maybe. Their family owns and operates soda and candy shops. She enjoys painting in her free time for fun and relaxation. We're going to focus on the subject of a giraffe for this painting, and we are going to use some inspiration from Andrea Nelson to create it. As you can see, I already did my pencil drawing. So as I am drawing in Sharpie in this video, you are going to be first drawing in pencil. You're going to start with the shape of the nose, which is kind of a rounded rectangle, and it should be above the middle of the paper. That way we have enough space for a long neck. Next, you're going to make a rainbow line above the rounded rectangle, and that's for the head. Two tiny dots make great eyes, and two ovals make great nostrils for the nose of our giraffe. Happy little giraffe has a nice little smile. Giraffes have these nice horns at the top of their head, so I use two vertical rectangles with horizontal rectangles at the top that I colored in. The ears are just two stretched out ovals with a point at the end, and I added a little shadow to the top. When we make two vertical lines down to the bottom of the paper, that helps it look like our giraffe has a long neck as it should. And then for the spots, we're going to make some organic shapes. These shapes don't really have a name. They're kind of like a blob of paint or a puddle of water. So I made some of my shapes attached to the sides of my giraffe's neck and then some in the middle. I didn't make too many because I didn't want to have too many tiny spaces to paint in. As you can see, as I'm trying to trace over my name, it is not working very well with this large Sharpie. I strongly recommend a normal size Sharpie to write your name on the front of your paper like an artist. As you trace, remember I traced over that in Sharpie. I would like for you to trace over your pencil lines in black crayon. That way it'll help keep the next step of the process in a little bit more order. We're going to be using watercolor to fill in all the beautiful spaces on our giraffe. The fun thing about Andrea Nelson's art is she does not always make her paintings realistic colors. So she uses fun and exciting colors that she feels would look the best. You're gonna get to do that too. So I'm gonna let you watch how I filled in my giraffe and I hope you enjoy creating with me.
After you finish painting your giraffe, we are going to use a splatter painting technique to put some pretty dots on the paper and make it look just more interesting around our giraffe. We have to be very careful with this process. We're not trying to make a big mess, even though this process can be a little bit messy, we can still use our self-control to make these beautiful splatters happen. Always, before you switch colors, you're going to rinse your brush, just like you have been the whole time. You're going to choose a color to start with, and then you're going to gently tap your paintbrush over your paper to make the splatters. I tried not to tap my brush right over my giraffe because I wanted most of the splatters to be on the white part of the paper. I just used one finger, I used my pointer finger to tap the paintbrush, little bits at a time. Very slowly, as you can see, I moved my brush around the paper carefully and I thought before I tapped so I wasn't just making a lot of messes. I thought about the colors I wanted to use also. I started with blue and then decided to try some yellow and I tried to spread out those splatters to different areas where the paint had not already covered before. So I wanted to try to cover some more of the white spots. 